A tragic case of domestic violence turns deadly. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us. Well, more than half of the shootings which have taken place over the past week in Prince George's have been domestic related. Today, county leaders called on the community to put a stop to these crimes. CTV Stephen Graves is in Camp Springs with more. Right now, you're looking at the Camp Springs house where the latest in a string of domestic related shootings occurred right here in Prince George's County. Now today, county and religious leaders met in this very neighborhood to express their concern with this growing issue of domestic violence. Now, Angela also Brooks, who organized the meeting, said this issue is a matter of the soul, not the justice system. And it starts with restoration within the family, specifically when it comes to men. This issue cannot be simply resolved uh, only by one segment of our community, but instead we have a number of men who have joined me this morning from the faith community, um, some of our uh, leaders as well, to say that they likewise have taken ownership over this issue, uh, that we will lead our families, that we will protect our families, that we are calling for peace and unity uh, in our families, but we're doing so uh, as well with the leadership of the men of our community um, who will be able to speak to the men of this community um, as we seek to solve this particular issue. We can challenge men everywhere. We can challenge them in the barbershop when they make comments that are inappropriate. Oh yeah, I slapped her. Oh, that's completely, a completely appalling comment. Someone needs to check somebody on that. Any man can be a leader and stand up and not go for uh, the objectification of our women and children. In government, we're the last people, people, uh, especially men, uh, and especially African Americans that reach out for help. Um, but they do go to church, they do talk to their ministers, and um, we want them to know there's help out there. Despite about a 40% decline in overall crime here in the county over the past three years, domestic related incidents have stayed about the same. Now, state's attorney also Brooks has numerous plans in the future to team up with both state and county officials to combat and raise awareness of this domestic violence issue in the future. In Camp Spring, Stephen Graves, CTV News. And also, Brooks also announced that her office will host a Family Unity Summit later in December. The event will focus on issues that lead to family violence, such as economics, infidelity, and mental health. Officials now confirm that the man shot and killed by police over the weekend stabbed and fatally shot his three-year-old daughter. Police say on Saturday afternoon, 38-year-old Frederick Miller went to the Temple Hills home where his daughter Layla and her mother lived. Authorities say Miller shot the girl's maternal grandfather and great-grandmother and then took his daughter and fled. Officers responding to the scene began pursuing the vehicle and attempted to pull the car over. And within about 200 yards, officers had an armed encounter with Miller that resulted in the discharge of firearms by five Prince George's County police officers as well as one Maryland state trooper. At the conclusion of that, it was determined by the officers on the scene that Miller was in the vehicle and that he had received fatal gunshot wounds. It was also determined that Layla Miller, that innocent three-year-old, was also in the vehicle and that she had sustained a gunshot wound. About a four and a half inch blade. Um, it was open in the vehicle um, with blood on it. Um, and it appears to be the weapon that our suspect used uh, against Layla. It was a close, close contact wound gunshot. The gun was three to six inches away from Layla when it went off. Um, there were no officers anywhere. We were much, much further away. But also we did an analysis on the fragment, um, the bullet fragment that uh, we got from the autopsy. Um, it is not, it's inconsistent with any law enforcement rounds on the scene. The five Prince George's officers and one Maryland state trooper involved have been placed on routine administrative leave. Officials encourage anyone who witnesses domestic violence in their own family or someone else's to call police at 301-772-4433 or the 211 helpline. Meantime, coming up next month, CTV takes an intimate look back at the life of former county executive Wayne Curry. Wayne was, uh, growing up, he always had these aquariums, and he'd keep them in the basement sometimes, and Wayne and Daryl used to do this. They, uh, especially Wayne, he would put the stones in the aquarium with the gravel, and it looked like 
something out of National Geographic. He'd use live plants, and you could just sit down and just stare at them forever. He'd get all these different the colorful tropical fish, fish. The clown fish. And the way he just created them, it was just like something underwater. Like, because you could go scuba dive. Imagine going scuba diving. And it's like, wow, I don't need to go scuba diving. I can just sit here and watch these aquariums uh, Wayne and Daryl uh, put together here. He's, he's always been very creative. Family members and a colleague walked through an exhibit at the Sports and Learning Center and talked with us about his legacy and his impact on the county. He wanted to make sure that others had opportunity. And when he became county executive, he opened many, many doors to ensure a level playing field, to create lots of opportunities for a number of different people in the public sector as well as the private sector. So that, was, that became one of his mantras. And also to not accept the status quo that sometimes you have to take on the status quo. And I call it, he was reared in what I call it an activist incubator because he had his family, a dynamic activist family. He had the, um, um, Bill and Jackie Ely. He had Cora Rice, who was president Scott, of the right NAACP in the county at the time. Right next door. Right next door. And, and um, um, so all of those people, um, indoctrinated him and everyone else with this spirit of activism and to not accept the, the status quo. And if you see something wrong, you got to take it on. And he did that. Again, be sure to tune in in September for the series. Well, it is that time of year again when students head back to school. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration wants to remind motorists to be alert when driving through school zones. Latifa Majid is in the control room with more on the story. Hey guys, according to the State Highway Traffic Administration, school buses are the safest means of transportation for students, plus it keeps millions of cars off the road each year. However, unfortunately, over the past 10 years, more than 40 kids have been killed because motorists simply aren't paying attention. So since the new school year is starting up, I have some tips that can help keep your child safe. These first three tips are for students. Stand at least six feet from approaching school buses. Wait to board the bus until the driver says it's safe and always watch for oncoming traffic. Now for motorists, watch out for children when driving in neighborhoods, slow down when yellow lights are flashing on a bus, and obey the school bus laws. Now, one of the main tips that the administration gave is to cross the street in front of the bus and to make sure that the bus driver sees you. In the control room, I'm Lucifa Majid. Back to you guys in the studio. And for safety tips, you can visit safercar.gov. Meantime, Montgomery County is kicking off its new school year with a backpack campaign. The effort funds book bags for students at high poverty schools. The backpacks will be stuffed with paper, notebooks, and other supplies. According to the Washington Post, the county has raised more than 100,000 dollars, enough for more than 15,000 backpacks. The goal is to raise 170,000 dollars. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Ballone. And I'm Gina Barti. 